First thing, set aside your makeup because we're going to quickly touch on skincare first. To us first-timers in Korean beauty, skincare could be a little bit overwhelming and costly. So I'm just gonna stick on what I know is available and effective at the moment. Just make sure do not skip skincare. What you've seen is the process on how I make rice water that I'm gonna be using to rinse off everything off of my face after I exfoliate my skin. Rice water for face wash gives you skin brightening, anti-aging, reduces wrinkles, acne, and so on. Right after we exfoliate, we will be icing our skin. Icing our skin actually prepares your skin for a deeper moisturizing effect. It helps break out down a lot faster and actually it's an effective anti-aging preventive technique. Next up, I will be moving on to moisturizer. Instabright as my moisturizer provides instant radiance. It promotes progressive brightening effect after each application. Now don't get me wrong, I love my color, I'm tan. But since we're achieving a K-pop look, I have to adjust my skin tone a little bit lighter. Next step, I will be using Wet n Wild Luminous Face Primer to bring back some glow. Now, Dewy Primer is a game changer once you're doing a dewy foundation. Remember, always have a nice base. Moving on to LA Pro Conceal Orange Color Corrector. Now, orange disguises dark circles, dark spots on medium to dark skin tones. I'm just applying it on the problematic part of my face. Now using a smaller dump sponge or you can just use your finger, I'm just blending the product to make it seamless. Now I'm using MAC Studio Face and Body Foundation. It gives the skin almost a plasticized texture. It's my favorite dewy, natural, skin-like foundation finish. Now this is what you want to use once you're achieving a Korean glass skin trend. As you can see, using a smaller foundation brush, I am distributing the product, not dragging it, but gently on a dubbing motion. Taking my Lux Reveal Dynamic Duo in the shade 00, it's another set of stick foundation that I need to have a further more coverage. I know this looks weird, but trust me, after this, you won't be needing another concealer. Now using the same brush, I will just go on and blend it on a dubbing motion. And using a little amount of powder, I'm just gonna set my face to avoid creasing. Notice that I only focus the powder under eye, on the T-zone, and even to buff out the lid. I'll also do baking under eye to cut some fallouts from the eyeshadow, and also to lighten up my under eye. Next step, using my double-sided spoolie from Benefit, what I'd like to do first is to brush my hair upwards. Doing that is very essential because you're putting your brows in place. Diving back to my browsings, I'm just making an outline for the brows. The goal here is to make your brows as straight as possible. And whatever's left on the brush, I will just fill in the gap. Now using the other side of the brush, I will just brush it upwards to diffuse it and to make it more natural. Next step, I'm gonna use Usha's Brow Gel. Or you can just use any brow gel that has a warmer tone. This is only to change your brow color. Now, I'm going to take some concealer and clean the area around my brows. This is the time to adjust and correct the shape of the brows and to correct any mistakes. I'll also put on concealer on the lid to act as my eyeshadow primer. Using a more tapered brush, I'm gonna dive into Morphe 3502 in the shade Risky. I'm just going to place that all over the crease. That will act as my transition shade. As we kind of place that on our lid, we're going to begin diffusing it outwards. Then whatever's left on the brush, I'll just bring it on the lower lash line. 
then I'd like to use a pencil brush from Bobbi Brown and I'm diving in the shade Heat. For this eyeshadow, I really want to use a pencil brush because it's able to really get exactly where you want to place that eyeshadow. Now I'm just really focusing the color on the lid to give me a nice wash of color. Again, whatever's left on the brush, I'm just bringing it on the lower lash line. Then using my finger, I'm gonna dip in the shade HUD and gradually build up that shimmer to marry everything and to make it blended as one. Then to add a little bit more dimension, more drama, I'm gonna pop some glitter eyeshadow from Australis. I'm just going to put this on my lid and I will also put on some glitters on the lower lash line at the inner corner and take it about halfway. Finally, we're gonna move on to eyeliner. Don't do the mistake of overlining your eyes. Remember, we're gonna keep it as thin as possible. We will just extend the tail, staying as close as you can to your natural lash line. Now I'm gonna get my MAC eyeliner and we'll just fill in the tight line to make your lash line look fuller. Since we have already curled our lashes, this part is optional because it's too risky you might burn your eyes. But in Korea, this technique is a trend where they burn a stick and use it to curl lashes. Its effect was phenomenal. Now, it's time to dust off everything and we will be moving on to blush on. For my blush on, I will be using Thormar Satin Matte Blush. Peg here is Lottie from Princess Ara. Focus the blush on on the cheekbone, on the tip of the nose, and even on the chin. Just to give a winter effect. Now I'm using Lustrous Palette and I'm diving on the pinkish highlighter. So yeah, from this moment, I've decided to not just put on fake lashes. One, I don't have any. Number two, I'm afraid this might change the look. So just make sure to fully and carefully curl it. And honey, the burning stick technique did a great job. So anyway, this lipstick was inspired by the Korean gradient lips. So I'm gonna do it. Just keep on watching. Watch and learn. 